Our processional hymn is Christ the Lord is risen today. Please stand. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. 
Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may, by your life-giving spirit, be delivered from sin and raised from death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from Acts chapter 10, beginning with verse 34. So Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 118, beginning with verse 14. We will read the psalm responsibly. By whole verse, I will begin. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, Behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. In returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the rest. 
Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale and they didn't believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves and he went home marveling at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. May we pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When was the last time you were really surprised? If you've been an adult for a while like I have, it's probably been a while. It's probably been a while since you've had a good surprise. Well, in the Gospel according to Luke, this first Easter morning has a series of good surprises, but they're surprises nevertheless. And what we find in this Gospel passage in Luke are spiritually lost people who are devastated by Christ's crucifixion. And what we see on that first Easter morning is a series of surprises, one after another. So let's return to look at this first Easter morning to see this day of surprises. Well, the first surprise, the stone covering the tomb of Jesus has been rolled away. Several women make a slow walk early Sunday morning to a place of burial. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and other women, they hoped for a miracle. For them, that miracle would have been to be able to get into the tomb to anoint the dead body of Jesus. As was the custom, the body of Jesus was placed in a temporary tomb where the body would decompose for a year. Then the body was taken out and placed in a permanent grave. That's why there was a huge stone wheel placed in front of the tomb so that there could be access after a year to the burial chamber. The stone weighed about a ton. It was accessible but th these are the days before modern machinery. It would require several strong men to move the stone. So for these women, being able to get access somehow to the body of Jesus would have been a miracle. And as they went, they took the spices they had prepared. And the first surprise was the fact that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. And the second surprise was that when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Who would take his body? It couldn't have been robbers or followers of Jesus who wanted to stage a resurrection by taking his body and making out like he was alive. The religious authorities had already thought of that, and Roman soldiers were around taking precautions, as we know from other accounts. There's no body. And then there's a third surprise. The women see two men who stood by them in dazzling apparel. And what did these men, these angels say? Well, the women were surprised to hear this news. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while Jesus was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered the words of Jesus. The events of that morning would not have been intelligible unless God himself gave the meaning of Christ's crucifixion, and his resurrection by revelation 
through his messengers, these angels. The women hear the news, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. They go to the, the apostles who are closeted, who are isolated, who are afraid that what happened to Jesus is going to happen to them. Well, the women knew where they were, and they found them. And these apostles, these men who had been with Jesus for over three years, these spiritual giants, the surprise was they didn't believe the women. The women who told these things to the apostles, but these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Still, Peter goes in this account to the tomb to investigate. It says that he ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves and went home marveling at what had happened. The burial linen cloths were there. Why would someone unwrap the body of Jesus, leave the linens there, and take the body? It made no sense. It was surprising. And that's how this account ends in Luke. It's a day full of surprises. The tomb is empty. Jesus, as the apostles will discover, is alive. He is risen from the dead. This is the news of that first Easter Sunday. Jesus is not here. He's not in the tomb, but he has risen. Jesus is alive. This is the most surprising fact in world history. The crucified Son of God dies for the sins of the world on Good Friday, Holy Friday, and rises again from the dead on Easter Sunday, defeating sin's power to give us freedom over sin and spiritual death. Even physical death holds no power over humanity because God is more powerful than sin and death that the resurrection of Christ testifies to. Through Christ, there is life after physical death. This is an amazing surprise on this day of surprises that Jesus is alive today, right now. Someone that you can meet today through faith in him. That he really did come to earth from heaven to be born in a manger in Bethlehem to be the savior we all need. And as the angels said to the shepherds out in the fields, for unto you is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Even though this promise was made over 2,000 years ago, or thereabouts, because it is God's word, it has immediacy. The Savior who is born to you means me. The Savior was born for me. And his entry, and Christ's entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, his arrest, trials, flogging, and crucifixion were with you in mind. He died on the cross to do something surprising for you, dying in your place, so that, for, that all that you've done against God and all that you've done against other people all that selfishness and self-preoccupation to the exclusion of anyone else has been crucified with Christ. And because of what he has achieved on your behalf, sin's power over your life is gone as you accept Christ by faith in him because he is alive. With him, you have freedom and peace. 
because the tomb really was empty. He is not here. He has risen. Jesus has come to this world and come to you to transform broken, sorrowing, and anxious lives with the gladness of discovering him alive and with us. The more we know the love of God, the more we know what Christ has done for us, is no surprise. God wants us to stop looking inward and stop looking at our own lives with its own problems and wants as the priority. Look to God first because when we accept Christ, the old life is over, the new has begun. As it says in Colossians, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated on the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Set your minds on things that are above. Think about the cross. Think about what the cross means. Set your mind, be deliberate, begin your day whenever it begins. And I know it's kind of early here at 8 o'clock. But begin your day with God on your mind. Say the Lord's Prayer. The prayer Jesus gave us. Think about what it means. It's an example of setting your minds on things that are above, setting your mind on God, and making that the priority of your day. And the good news that life isn't all about you. It's about knowing God and being part of his team to make him known by how you live for him. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. The old life you knew before Christ is gone. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, you also will appear with him in glory. When this life ends and we join Jesus in heaven, one day when he returns, we will be with him. Because wherever he is, we will be with him forever. Because we met Jesus in this life. We know he is alive. His spirit comes to reside in us, reminding us of the truth of his promises contained in God's word. And we meet Jesus in the special meal he gave to his people before he was crucified at the Last Supper. He gave us Holy Communion. You meet Jesus when you receive the bread and wine, his body and blood, and hear his words, not the words of the priest. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. You, you means me. His body on the cross was given for me. His blood on the cross was shed for me. And this is the body and blood we receive. Christ's body to remind us of his presence with us forever and what he did for us until he returns. You may be surprised this morning that God took this much care about you to do so much for you. But that's what God's love looks like. It's sacrificial. Thinking more about you than Jesus was thinking about himself. He has come for us to know God and know God's way. To live. The one to follow. The one to listen to in his word because his, his way is the way that gives eternal life. Jesus came to give us life after death, but Jesus also came to give us life before death, the peace and hope only God can give in the midst of an incredibly troubled and hurting world. Jesus came that you may have life and have it abundantly. The first Easter morning began with one surprise after another. The women discover to their surprise that the stone in front of the tomb has been rolled away. They're surprised to see no body. They're surprised to see the angels. They're surprised by the news that Jesus has risen from the dead. 
They tell the apostles to disbelieve them, but Peter confirms the, the news that there's no body, and he is surprised. And in this day full of surprises, we're left with a final surprise of God's surprising love for you to be the Savior you need to rescue you from hopelessness and meaninglessness in life. He said that when he is lifted high up on the cross, he will draw all people to himself. And in this day, we remember around the world that he has drawn many people, millions and millions of people, messy people like you and me, drawn by the God who loves the lost, who has not given up on us no matter how many times we have fallen away or turned away, a God who searches for the lost until he or she is found, a Savior who reaches out to us from the cross to welcome us into his family, the church. Jesus comes to us as God's great gift, and with any gift we receive this gift with gratitude. We who have put our trust in Jesus have seen the Lord by faith. And by knowing Christ, we are changed forever. The Lord Jesus that has transformed us and given us hope in the church has given us a mission as God's people to love God, to know God, to live for Christ in thankfulness for what he has done for us so that those who don't know Jesus will come to know this surprising good news we celebrate on Easter Sunday. Christ has risen. Amen. Please stand. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy. Amen. We beseech thee also so to lead the nations of the world into the way of righteousness, and so to direct and dispose the hearts of all our leaders, especially Joe Biden, our president, and Michelle Lujan Grisham, our governor, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may truly and impartially administer justice, 
upholding integrity and truth, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to your servants, Foley, our Archbishop, Stephen, our Bishop, Pete, our Priest, and Bill, our Deacon, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and strengthen us to fulfill thy great commission making disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching them to obey all thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy, we give thanks to our missionaries, especially Faith Comes by Hearing, an organization that records and provides audio Bibles in over 1,300 languages, and Cairo's prison ministry, a lay-led interdenominational Christian ministry in which men and women volunteers bring Christ's love and forgiveness to prisoners and their families. Guide them, O Lord, and give them boldness to serve you. Lord, in thy mercy. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Hope, Kelly, Malcolm, Paula, Bill, Mike, Dee, Everett, Olea, Lena, and others we now name before you. Lord, in thy mercy, we remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants who have departed this life in thy faith and fear, that thy will for them may be fulfilled. And we beseech thee to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, O God, our Heavenly Father, by your Son, Jesus Christ, you have promised to these those who seek your kingdom and its righteousness all things necessary to sustain life. Send us, we pray, in this time of need, such moderate rain and showers, that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to your honor. Lord, in thy mercy. Grant these our prayers, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling as you're able. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, 
which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen all goodness and bring into everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what come for words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, good morning. Please be seated. Special welcome to guests who are here with us for Easter Sunday. Uh, after this service, there's a special reception in the parish hall, if you'd like to join us for that. Also, there's a booklet, Why Easter, on the table uh, in the exit area at the Northex uh, for you to, to pick up, and it's uh, an excellent uh, resource about the meaning of Easter. For Holy Communion, we have three, we have four options. The first option uh, is that uh, you're welcome during Holy Communion to remain in your pews. If you'd like to receive communion this morning and you're in, in good fellowship with your faith community, uh, you're welcome to receive in the Anglican Church. There are containers of bread and wine on this lower altar that you will uh, receive and then the words of Jesus will be said, this is my body given for you, this is the, my blood shed for you. Uh, and uh, so that's one option. Uh, this, the second option on, on this side where I am is that if you'd like to receive and then you'd like to take the bread and intinct or to dip it in the chalice, that's one option. And on, on this side... Uh, with, with the chalice bearer, you are welcome to receive the chalice and drink from it. So here, uh, this is for intinction and there uh, for drinking. And then on the lower altar, you can receive as well. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was offered for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. In the... All glory be to thee, Almighty God, O Heavenly Father, for that thou thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for redemption, who made thereby as one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and of thine almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these, this, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For in the night in which he betrayed, he took bread, and when given thanks, he break it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same, and looking for his coming again in power and great glory. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as the Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, 
and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
prayer is found on page 14. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost to share us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. The recessional hymn is The Strife is O'er. <laughs> 